Every once in a while, a movie is a piece of magic. It's almost inexplicable what makes it work so good. It's not about one shot or one character or one piece of dialogue, but there's this inexplicable magic that connects it all. I've always thought that the Ghostbusters ended up an extended family of their own, and in a strange way, because of the death of Harold Ramis, that family got broken, and so this afterlife script seems to tie these ideas together. One day, I was at Jason's house, and he said, I've been thinking about Ghostbusters. <laughs> I think my eyes lit up at the suggestion because I knew what it meant, not just that he was saying it to me, but what it meant uh, in terms of his own willingness to finally confront this legacy. I've always seen the original Ghostbusters as kind of mythical characters. And like any movie that you fall in love with, you wonder what happened to these characters. I couldn't possibly imagine directing them. So the first time they walked on set, you just kind of become a kid again and then you have to find your adult voice to say action. I'm uh, Janine Mellis. We spoke on the phone. When I read this new one, I thought, this one was so fresh. Jason has written such a valentine to his father. He got it just right, I think. Coming back at this point and embodying the character is sort of a, <laughs> a out-of-body experience. I feel like I never really left Dana, in a way. <laughs> it's hard to believe that however many years have passed. It sort of didn't really surprise me that she and Peter had ended up together. What surprised me is that maybe they actually have a good marriage. The originals in the cast, every one of us has gone on to have pretty remarkable careers. And so now to come back together and look back and enjoy that remembered moment and be in this moment as well is pretty great.